is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. And as always, we come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have? Well, we've got a light volume bounce of about 10 points. Uh, the pattern has been to sell the close or late in the day. Uh, of course, today is the first day of options rollover. Normally, if today is higher, tomorrow is lower. And Wednesday takes us into the true direction of the market. So we may have a little bit to go. But if today is higher, I'm looking for tomorrow to be lower. Maybe we go back to Friday's low or even a low, you know, that's yeah, maybe 2760 or something. Options uh, over Friday, at least option market makers are already uh, working on Friday uh, to set up a lower close. Basically, they think 2900 is where the market is headed. So about 86 points in the uh, cash lower than we're trading at right now. Uh, of course, we're up, but volume is not very good. In fact, we had about two, or excuse me, we had about 3.6, 3.7 billion shares uh, when we started on Friday. We only have about 3.2 billion shares right now. So it certainly looks, unless something uh, dramatically changes, that we'll have lighter volume than the last two Fridays, uh, which is, you know, light volume can be a curse and a blessing, uh, if the market's higher, we've made uh, at least attempted to make uh, a high and hold it a couple of times. But there isn't a lot out here that we can really hang our hat on. Um, there's going to be some earnings. Uh, not much after the bell tonight. We've got TD America Trade, uh, TD Amera Trade, and uh, Whirlpool uh, as the two after the after night tomorrow. Lockheed Martin and Biogen, uh, Centene Corporation, Harley-Davidson, JetBlue, Hasbro, Sherman Williams, Stanley Black & Decker, ATI, Polaris, CIT, Lincoln Electric Holdings. Um, got a lot of that. Uh, in the afternoon tomorrow, we go to Snap, Visa, Chipotle, iRobot, Texas Instruments, Edward Life Sciences, uh, we get into Wednesday morning, and that is Boeing, AT&T, Caterpillar, United Parcel Services, Northrop Grumman. So um, a lot of the biggies, uh, most of the defense stocks, most of the uh, airliner stocks that trade uh, publicly. Uh, we got Freeport uh, McMoran uh, at 8 a.m. on Wednesday. And then, of course, uh, you roll around. Into the afternoon, you get Facebook on Wednesday, Tesla, PayPal, Xilinx, Align Technology, Las Vegas Sands, Six Flags, O'Reilly Automotive, H5. So we're going to have a lot of uh, individual stocks. What we're not going to have is a lot of either Fed speak because they're in their quiet period. Uh, and certainly right now it looks like the president's, uh, uh, I mean, Probably not going to tweet a lot about the Fed. It's not going to do them any good. They can't respond. So probably not a lot on that farm. It's just going to be straight earnings. And from Microsoft to others, uh, it hasn't been a thing that really made you say uh, the market's going up. In fact, I, I would say 99 out of 100 technical analysis folk would say Microsoft had a major reversal. Uh, come Friday. You had a little bounce out here today, uh, but that candle is not good. You had a lot of volume. It was all on the way down. You got a little candle on the way up today on very light volume. Um, still looking for this thing to come back to 129, maybe 124. 
off the 140.67 high that we did have on Friday and on earnings. Uh, but uh, give you a little idea to sell the news uh, and uh, nothing new there. Uh, in Steve Rhodes' uh, show earlier in the day, uh, in fact, just in the last hour, caller was talking about Baltic Dry Index. And yes, uh, that is uh, basically the price that, that uh, shippers pay for bulk um, wheat, corn, anything you can fit in a ship, uh, iron, uh, anything that comes as a, as a giant ship full of stuff. Uh, and that is why it's called the ba uh, Baltic Dry Index. But, of course, that's just the dry stuff, not like crude and that kind of stuff. Uh, and, of course, what has happened is the, uh, that the, uh, what was it, um, that there's been a change uh, for a global change, actually, to reduce the amount of sulfur in the fuels that, tow this stuff around, they've allowed to have 3.5% sulfur in the uh, fuel oil, and that's going to half a percent. But apparently only about 5% of the ships have been set up to do it. Uh, the question is whether or not they're just going to wait everybody out and say, up yours, we're not going to spend all this money, uh, and you guys can all starve if you don't like it. Uh, but I don't know if you know, when you actually look at what's going on, uh, this is the uh, organization that's part of the UN uh, that basically said you got to do this by 2020. Don't know if they didn't give them enough time or the owners just think that if they don't do anything, uh, that when everybody starts starving and wheat and corn and iron doesn't come and the world uh, economies collapse, uh, that the uh, people at the UN will just cry uncle and it'll all be over. Uh, but like I said, I think it's, I've read three articles. I've been trying to find out who actually had ships that already comply. Uh, but it seems to be a, uh, uh, a job that either I didn't do well or maybe it's just not known. Uh, but certainly no one's talking about which ships are and which ships aren't. Uh, many people thought that the big move was because uh, there was a huge amount of demand for new uh, bulk shipping stuff. But the reality is, no. It's just those folks are starting to charge more and more uh, for ships that can go to certain countries uh, and tie up without the UN throwing a net over the boat. I don't see a lot in that. Uh, I talked to a couple of people that are big into the commodities business. They all understand it, and they all say the same thing. There is no play. So I, I don't think you can directly uh, play the Baltic Dry Index. I haven't seen ETF for it. If anybody finds one, give me a call at 877-927-6648. But, yes, uh, quite a move. Uh, if you... Uh, don't know what it is or you don't have a chart, if you email me at path at tfnn.com, I'll be glad to send you a link uh, to a website that does have uh, that chart so you can take a look at it. Path at tfnn.com, 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And a little bit more discussion during the break in the Tiger's Den about uh, this issue with the ships. And that is, you can either use cleaner, more expensive oil that only has a half a percent of, of sulfur, or you can buy what is the equivalent of a giant catalytic converter to put on these giant ships. Uh, but there isn't enough of the clean oil, and there aren't enough companies that uh, build these scrubbers, uh, and there isn't enough time to put them on the ships. So who knows what happens on January 1st of 2020. Uh, but if you believe everybody, it's all about uh, the... Uh, it's all about the ships that can go into certain ports uh, and those that can't because some places have already said you can't come into our port if you don't have the half percent uh, or equivalent uh, sulfur coming out. And, of course, that's to go after, you know, acid rain, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but the question is whether or not uh, and how long people are willing to wait to get this turned over. And whether or not uh, you actually start seeing people board ships uh, and find them or revoke their insurance or all the other things that can happen. Um, generally, I like to see things like this that have happened before so you know how they play out because there's generally a way in these businesses where things don't quite work the way that you think they are. Uh, I've looked at this problem since I started seeing these articles back at the 1st of May. And I don't see a clear signal in any way uh, that that's got to happen. Uh, okay. Uh, what else do we have? Let's do a little history. We'll move on to some charts today. We've got a callers lined up all week, I think. Uh, got one today at 2.30. Got one today. Uh, got one at Thursday. Got a lot of people calling in this week. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Oh, that isn't it. We wanted to do history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is nothing but history repeating. And on this day in 1934, outside Chicago's Biography Theater, nor uh, notorious criminal John Dillinger, America's public enemy number one, is killed in a hail of bullets fired by fe uh, federal agents in a fiery 
bank robbing career that lasted just over a year. Dillinger and his associates robbed 11 banks for more than $300,000, broke jail, and narrowly escaped capture multiple times, killing seven police officers and three federal agents over that one year span. On today in 1934. Of course, uh, yeah, what else can you say? Uh, let's go to some charts. Uh, started looking at charts earlier in the day. Um, again, we've already had a lot of signals in many of these. Uh, and the question is, what are we going to get out of them? Uh, as we uh, talked about it for a while, this uh, Abel Marie, Abel Marie, ALB is the symbol on it, the company that basically sells lithium and mines lithium. Um, gap down uh, on uh, 5 8, which was May the 8th for those in, uh, in Lutz, Florida. Uh, and we are back into that gap. Now, it did come down with that almost 4 million shares. Friday went into it with 1.4 million shares. Today, we've got about a million shares. Uh, it did spike it and kind of reverse out here. One of the interesting stories uh, with everything uh, pushing Tesla. Uh, was the amount of batteries that everybody was going to need. Uh, a lot of new products, uh, new cars coming out and being introduced over the next few weeks and into September for the 2020 uh, model year on cars, at least in the United States. Uh, and a lot of these are getting test driven and we're starting to see videos of them and reviews from track and driver and that kind of stuff. Uh, of course, uh, on Thursday, the new Corvettes came out Talk about sex on a stick. Um, $65,000 uh, gets you a mid-engine sports car uh, that looks like a Ferrari and a Lamborghini that had a child. Pretty, pretty hot car. Uh, anyway, what do we have in this? Um, of course, the big lithium companies. And you look at the movement that we had in Tesla uh, back off the lows. You're up to 262 today, which is really back into a lot of this uh, uh, resistance that came in on the way down. Now, the story on this one, of course, is that China is going to be buying all these cars now that the U.S. is not. Uh, and, of course, there's a lot of rumors that Tesla has been shipping as many cars as they could possibly build. Uh, quality has suffered. And the question is, as we get new uh, electric cars from other manufacturers, uh, in fact, there's, man, what have I seen so far? Seen the BMW, very nice car. Seen the Audi, uh, Audi, very nice car. Seen the Mini uh, from BMW, also a, a fairly interesting car. The question is, how much is too much? And what it's going to do when these cars start getting pushed uh, the EPA is going to make you sell a certain amount of electric cars uh, so that you can sell cars that people want to actually buy that burn gas, like that Corvette. Uh, anyway, the the push out here is, is on that. But right now, I don't know if you can believe all the stories you hear about deliveries. I'm not seeing a whole bunch of new ones on the street. Uh, but certainly the question is how many will these folks be able to sell in China? And of course, uh, the absolutely outrageous amount of pollution in China. Uh, many people estimate that of the pollution in the world, 90% of it comes from China right now. Uh, so us actually doing anything or all the other countries that like to do a lot of hang ring hand wringing, uh, probably not gonna change a great deal of what happens uh, unless China gets on the stick. Now, they're doing a lot more nuclear, uh, and I think they've got four new nuclear plants before the end of this year. The big problem they have is everything, they, uh, all the electric power generation is coal. So it's not really going to change anything. In fact, it may make it worse when Tesla electric cars, other than that are just not, you know, you're putting out uh, coal-based pollution or gasoline-based pollution, uh, one or the other in putting a Tesla on the road in China. Uh, the reality, you know, that is always where the rubber hits the road. Squirrel powered. Uh, yeah. 
Got to have some squirrel stew made by Granny. Remember, she was always having squirrel stew. Anyway, uh, Tesla's kind of back up into this resistance area. Uh, we covered it after being short from about $340 down into the uh, 230 area in the uh, Tech Insider. Because, uh, I mean, it just looked like the weakest thing in the world. Not surprised that you got a fairly big bounce because, of course, this got back up uh, to somewhere around 40% short interest. And uh, even the worst uh, company in the world can have a huge bounce when almost half of all the shares are shorted. We will be back. And I think we got a caller getting ready in the wings. And we'll wrap up uh, the next segment with that one. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And I think it was last week that uh, John from Philadelphia, a uh, caller to TFNN occasionally, uh, said that he had been trading some of the Bitcoin futures and I wanted to get uh, at least a little idea about uh, what his impressions are of uh, trading it before. But I think we've got him on the line right now. How are you doing today, John? David, I'm very well. Thanks for taking the call. And yes, indeed, uh, I'd like to talk uh, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and actually cryptographic keys to distributed uh, ledger technology uh, instruments. Um, yes, uh, David, uh, 
I will first tell you uh, I, uh, I'm indebted to you for what you did back in the fourth quarter of 2013, where you did a series of shows where you uh, uh, gave tutorials uh, explaining what, in fact, Bitcoin was at the time. And um, uh, I had uh, put just a, frankly, a trivial amount of money near Christmas of that year going through that brand new brokerage called Coinbase, which was launched, I think, in that year, um, and then scaled out of that in 2017. And, uh, you know, it was worth my time, uh, but didn't have enough to make any uh, sizable dough. But uh, that's just a bit of history. Um, after uh, Bitcoin surged this year from that three, Oh, 3,500 level up to 19,000, uh, June 26, I think was the day of the peak. I was, um, uh, I was curious and looking at the futures contract, which I had never traded, uh, just to be clear. And that changed for me when I saw a setup Monday, July 15th, just a week ago, where it looked like there was the potential for a, uh, a, B equals C, D decline pattern possibly completing. So I, uh, I took a stab on Monday the 15th, and then again it was either Wednesday, yeah, it was, it was Wednesday, um, and uh, had two trades, uh, both profitable, uh, but once again nothing to, to uh, write home about. And... Uh, so that was my first experience. I just share that with you. What, what's and the margin on, right now? I'm sorry? What's the margin on those? And that is a very good question. Uh, right now, the, the July Bitcoin futures contract trading at 10,200, that contract is five Bitcoin large. So you're talking five times 10 grand or a notional value of $50,000 uh, per contract. And here's the thing, David, there's no leverage allowed in that to speak of. The, uh, uh, the initial margin through the, uh, the, uh, the broker that I prefer to use, the, uh, uh, the margin is 30 grand uh, to trade the $50,000 uh, contract. So, so it's about 60% uh, it of, of what you have. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you can't lever it to speak of. Um, back to and now going back to the point, is this an instrument that I conclude is uh, tradable? And for me, my uh, and of course, I was not paying attention to this much back in January, February, when it was below four, when it would have paid to do so. That said, when we get up to these levels, you know, five digits, given that this, uh, uh, this instrument can move 5%, literally, within 10 minutes, it did so, in fact, last week on Thursday. Uh, for me, I conclude, you know, given the, uh, the very high margin, given the abruptness of the moves, uh, there is just, frankly, at these price levels, no way to trade this with risk control parameters that I that I use and that I've developed over the years. What's so the, I just shared I share that with you and your listeners for what it's worth. What's uh, what's uh, commission on the trading? Is it like everything else, or was it more oh, expensive? Yeah, it's, no, it's uh, you know through a. Uh, Discount broker, uh, it's, you know, it's inconsequential. So that's not the issue. Okay. I didn't know, you know, if they were charging more to get into that. So now, other than the fact that at the moment this thing is way too volatile uh, to trade and the margin really means that you're putting up all your money, you might as well trade the actual underlying and buy Bitcoins and sell Bitcoins, right? Exactly, yes. And, and for uh, furthermore, a at these price levels, that's right. Uh, clearly at uh, going through a brokerage such as Coinbase. And I believe, what? David, 
Coinbase is uh, run by a former TD Ameritrade executive who's got experience in running a brokerage with all the regulatory compliance work. But um, so, found, so that, for you, example, is a broker out there who offers the, the service of, of, uh, of trading, uh, phys well, physical, physical Bitcoin. I, and that is a, uh, that is a non sequitur, I, uh, I understand. <laughs> but, it, um, have, have you tried actually shorting it? I have not shorted the futures, nor have I ever shorted the Bitcoin itself. No. Yeah, I, I, that's the one part that I keep looking at, and I can't find any good information on what they do allow and what they don't allow for shorting on things like Coinbase. But right. Again, I haven't David, been highly I, I wanted, motivated. With, with just that little uh, description of what I've discovered, sharing with you and your listeners, I wanted to pose a question to you just about uh, cryptographic keys. Um, I'll share this. Here's my working hypothesis. My hypothesis is Bitcoin was an invention by people who won't reveal themselves uh, to prototype um, distributed ledger technology safeguarded by digital keys. That is my working hypothesis. And then, of course, we've had the, uh, the invention and rollout of other things like Ethereum and Litecoin, Ripple as well. But as this process has evolved, of course, we all have read that the likes of J.P. Morgan Bank have created their own uh, DLT system with its cryptographic keys, which they call a version of stable coin and various central banks around the globe uh, uh, discuss their uh, work in that area. And my question is, David, has the state of the arts in this cryptographic technology advanced such that Ethereum, Ripple, Bitcoin, Litecoin just will have no place uh, other than speculative trading vehicles in, you know, a digital monetary system. Do you have any thoughts well, on that? We'll have me? to answer that question on the other side of this break. Be back in Thank a minute. Thank you. in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Uh, S and P's up seven. Nasdaq's up just shy of fifty. Dow's uh, down about seven or eight. We got uh, John from Philadelphia on the line. We're talking about uh, Bitcoin, uh, and I guess more to the point, the distributed ledger. Uh, for those that have missed any of the discussions about this or always wondered what Bitcoin really was, uh, it is a idea of having money that is virtual, uh, but th there is a way of having uh, the books uh, open to everybody that trades it so they know how many uh, different coins uh, or dollars, uh, but they call it coins and Bitcoin, uh, and where it goes. And of course, uh, we've got a, a kind of a different issue here in that you can use uh, blockchain for different purposes other than trading cash. A lot of people have been thinking about how to uh, tell everybody uh, at the, uh, at the uh, property office who owns what parcel of land. Uh, and there's been a lot of thoughts on you know, doing this. Now, the problem with the original Bitcoin is that you have to have the Bitcoin database since day one, uh, which was problematic. Uh, and that database just gets larger and larger and unwieldy. Uh, and of course, the idea was that you could use this like a credit card and just buy things. Well, it's gone. It's been a long time since you could get a transaction handled in a second. Uh, it now takes much longer. So people are looking to fix a lot of the flaws in the original Bitcoin system. Uh, Microsoft and Oracle are both working on databases that have elements of being able to share uh, the ledgers uh, for who own, owns what uh, in a traditional database. And the idea on that is that you could just update the transactions on the database instead of trying to have to eat the entire thing every time you want to update uh, the ledger. Um, and again, those features in a traditional database are probably the way I think things are going to end up for the in the long term. Uh, there's a few things where a blockchain makes a lot of sense. There's also a thing called a Merkle tree, uh, which makes a little bit more sense. But these are all just ways of having a secret number that proves that you bought something or that you sold something or that someone owes you something. Uh, but I don't know if there's a lot out there uh, to uh, to say that anything is dramatically changed, other than the, other than Facebook saying that they're going to come out with their own system. Uh, unclear whether it's based on Oracle or Microsoft or their own internal uh, issues. Uh, but you know what? The problem is that you always have to rely on something that could go away. Uh, it's not only trust, it's trust with something that can 
easily go away like a, a thumb drive or a CD or anything else. And that continues to be one of the biggest problems is that you could just flip on a light and everything could be gone. You've got no real proof other than the electronic proof that you had. I'd be very careful uh, in any of these systems in the fact that most of these, or let me put it, most of these, uh, I'm going to say three-fourths of the coin-based things have ended up being a scam to one level or another. Uh, and, you know, if you, I guess the people at Facebook think uh, that if you, if they were behind it, that you could trust that it would be a real thing. Uh, but again, I don't think anybody in government is going to let them anywhere near it. Um, so it, it continues to be an issue. The number one purpose for Bitcoin was uh, sending money to people that you didn't want to be able to have them trace your cash. Uh, drug dealers, now that that has become not much of a real use case anymore, since the government can actually tr uh, find anybody that used or did a transaction, those days are gone. It has become kind of a trading vehicle. Um, Companies like, uh, what is it, uh, I'll think of the symbol here, but it was, uh, you know, they, uh, under, oh, overstock.com is what I was thinking about. They made kind of a claim that, you know, they were going to be the first big company to accept Bitcoin, and for some reason that was going to be a big deal. We found out that that was untrue. Um, and sometimes you just have great technology uh, that never finds uh, the real killer application. A killer application in Bitcoin was avoiding uh, the IRS and the feds uh, for selling uh, illegal things and doing illegal things. Uh, now the use case has changed mostly uh, to just uh, an issue of, of uh, trading. And, yeah, you know, the biggest thing I can say is that when we look at the price of Bitcoin, these days is over $8,000, suddenly we're starting to see signs uh, from AMD and others that Bitcoin mining is back, especially uh, where electricity is incredibly cheap. The Bitcoin miners are like in the Norwegian uh, countries where a kilowatt hour is like half a cent or a cent or two compared to the five to 10 cents that we see here in the United States. Uh, those guys are back at it because above eight grand, they can make money. And I think that's the only thing that's truly changed any time in the, in the recent past. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll get back here. We're up seven on the S&P cash. No juice all day long. Again, some earnings tonight, a lot more tomorrow. And I think that's going to put uh, the pail on it. Um, as I've looked at options, in fact, uh, why don't we go ahead and show those. Uh, I will bring it up. Do I have time? Yeah, a minute. Uh, we'll look at what option market makers are thinking as of Friday. See, did I get it? Nope, that one, it, maybe it's here. Nope. Let's see if I can find it here. We have time. Yeah, I still got a minute. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Yeah. Come on. See if I can get it done. There we go. I still have a little time here left. We'll zoom on it. Uh, right now, when we look at options, as I said, the option market makers uh, are pretty sure that we're probably headed a little bit lower. Uh, this is a fairly decent pattern uh, for this time in options expiration, the options expiration cycle, but there's continue to look at uh, lower prices right now we're down about uh, 291 on the uh, uh, spies and that sets up well about 70 points lower uh, for the bias right now we'll see after earnings but uh, they're a little concerned that a few people are going to miss and or people will take a chance to sell the news and we will look at that when we come back
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we get ready to wrap up, yes, uh, Facebook did break through the 54 million share high on April 25th. Uh, with about 15, 16 million shares. Uh, it's not quite closed back below that 198.48, but if it does, it did on, well, it was right at that level on Friday. If it does it in a couple of days here, uh, you can see the right shoulder and a lot of these things getting ready to come back. I suspect we're going to get some news in Facebook. Looks to me like not in the next couple of days, but over the coming weeks. Uh, this 180 to 185 range uh, is where support is, and it may be uh, some news about uh, 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 that we see about the uh, security and privacy. Um, I, I'm thinking that there's another shoe to drop uh, after the $5 billion fine. Uh, to, to, to what else did I want to see? Beyond me? Uh, a lot of people have talked about that. I don't hear a lot about it in the last couple of days. I uh, did find it kind of interesting that it's up here testing the previous 24 million share high with about 9 million shares today, BYND. Uh, Arby's got a, like a billion and a half dollars over the weekend. Uh, they're going to go up against Beyond Meat and say, we've got the meat. But uh, eh, billion and a half doesn't seem like much compared to the Beyond Meat's valuation. 
Uh, and, you know, we've got a lot of these stocks coming out this week. Um, we'll see a lot of after uh, action reports. But I think by the time we get to Boeing on Wednesday and Wednesday morning, I think that's where we're going to find the meat to go back to one of those commercials from the 80. Where's the beef? I think it's in Wednesday morning's earnings announcements. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same at bat time. And of course, hang on for more earnings after the night. Um, we'll